Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're heading out to the field to do some QRP portable work with a solar powered field station. If this trip is successful, what we learned from it will help all of you with your MAM portable winter field communications. I have a pretty hefty list of objectives, so let's go through them. First things first, we're going to keep things real and use the ski polk to carry our load out to the operating location. Next we're going to set up the shelter and wood stove, get the heat going so we can operate in comfort. Next I'll set up the radios, computers and antennas. Then we'll set up the portable power and solar panel. I'm going to try to get my signal into North America. United States or Canada, either one is fine. Once I've completed or attempted all those objectives, I'll pack up the field station and head home, hopefully without getting cold. Just a quick reminder before we get started, please click that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you'll get notifications every time I publish a new video. All right, let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems this station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign narrative. What should have been a relatively easy two and a half to three kilometer hike turned into a struggle to pull the ski polk through this deep, wet snow. Now, I can't say that I really mind because after all, we train as we fight. But I'd be a liar if I said it wasn't at least a little bit annoying. Now the concept of a polk sled might seem ridiculous to someone at a lower latitude, but its sole purpose is to augment our load carrying capability while we're operating in winter wonderland. So I loaded up the polk sled with my radio gear, my shelter, wood stove. I took some wood so I wouldn't have to collect it once I was there and a few other things just to make the excursion a bit more comfortable while I operated. So I found a nice spot not too far from home in Kilo Papa 25 Quebec Charlie 52 X-Ray Sierra and that's a spot you've seen on the videos before. Since we're always trying to keep it real I have to tell you that MAM portable amateur field communications during winter requires a different set of priorities. Now I know the military and other large logistical organizations have a different philosophy, but this is how I do it. The highest of my priorities and the first thing I'm going to do is set up my shelter. This will help me prevent exposure and provide shelter for myself and my gear. Next I'm going to create a fire or some other source of heat for the shelter. This will create a nice warm space to operate out of and that's especially important when we get to the next step. The next step is setting up my comms gear and that includes my radio, antennas and of course solar power. Once I've got my shelter, I've got my heat and my radio gear is all set up, at that point I can focus on communications. You may or may not agree with this but let's talk about it in the comments. So I finally got myself and the pulk sled up to my operating location and as I took my first look at the view I realized it was all worth it. So now it was time to set up the shelter. I pegged out the teepee tent then went around and installed the snow anchors. This was my first time using these snow anchors and honestly I could have used some sort of tool to pound them into the ice. After raising the center pole of the teepee, I went ahead and covered the skirt of the teepee with snow. This is the end result. Now I'm going to drag the pulk sled inside the shelter and I can also fine tune it once I'm inside. Now, although it's not difficult to set up, I do have some feeling of accomplishment as I look at it from the outside. Now I'm inside the shelter, I'm out of the wind, I'm out of the sleet and I can go ahead and set up the wood stove. Now I've talked about it on the blog before and I think also in some videos but we don't want to be fiddling around with lots of small pieces to a wood stove or anything else. The more you fiddle the more you're going to get your hands cold and the more miserable you're going to become. 
so I chose a folding stove which only has three main pieces. It's incredibly simple to set up. You simply unfold the walls, put the top on, add the stove pipe, and light it up. The wood stove is the secret to extended field communications in winter. Another reason for the wood stove is getting rid of condensation inside the teepee and being able to dry out your gear before you have to tear down the teepee and head on to your next location. Now all I have to do is let this sit a while, keeping an eye on it and load it up every now and then. And uh, I have a nice warm teepee tent to operate out of. Now, normally I wouldn't have shown this level of detail, but I thought it's important for you to see every step of setting up this field station during winter. So now we have shelter and heat. Let's focus on comms now. Today I have two different antenna systems with me, the Chameleon MPOS and the Super Antenna MP1. And many of you are probably going to wonder if I have lost my mind, but what's happening here is the ground is actually frozen. There's snow on top of the ground, which isn't a problem, but under the snow is a layer of ice, and under the ice is the frozen earth. So I get the antennas set up, and I run the cables into the teepee. Once the antennas are set up, I'll move over to deploying the solar panel. Before you scold me in the comments, I already know the solar panel is not going to be very effective in the snow and sleet. But the reason I'm deploying it anyway is because I want to set up a routine or a memory effect so that each time I come out and set up the station, I'll do exactly the same thing. It'll become a routine. It'll become second nature. So now the station is basically set up and ready to operate. I've got two antenna systems today, and the first is the Chameleon Impulse on the right side of the TP. That's got the uh, CHA Spike and Mil EXT. On the left side, I have the Super Antenna MP1, and that's mounted to a TM4 SuperPod tripod. One of the questions I often get is condensation on the radios. I just thought I'd tell you that I don't take the radios out of the Pelican case until the TP is up to temperature then there's absolutely zero condensation problem. With my comms gear all set up, I generally like to scan the bands before I do anything else. The very first station I hear is Delta November 3, Foxtrot Alpha. This is no surprise as it's actually kids day. Now, I wasn't able to complete that QSO with Hannes, but I wanted to go ahead and include it in the video in hopes of inspiring this operator to continue their ham radio career. In the end, Hannes actually had a QSO with Oscar Hotel 2, Fox Delta Quebec. Let's listen in for a while. I did try to complete that QSO after the Oscar Hotel 2 stations, but even though the big guns almost made it impossible to complete the QSO with Hannes, I think this video is going to serve as a nice ham radio reminder for Kids Day. I'll try to find some contact details and send this recording to Hannes. I had planned to be on PSK31 or PSK63 this weekend, but I decided to do some FT8 testing to North America instead. I ended up testing on 40, 30, 20, and 17 meters. Now, even though I was able to work stations all over Europe on 40, 30, and 20, I could hear stations from North America, but I simply couldn't get to them with the 5 watts I had. Now, I'm certain I'll get better performance out of the terminated dipole, but this 5 watt limitation is sometimes becoming an issue when I want to get to North America. For Europe, it's absolutely fine. 
Overall, the station worked very well. Everything was easy to set up and my comms gear worked as expected. One of the things I've been thinking about was augmenting the power output of the 817 with some sort of small amplifier. I found this 10 watt amp from qrpver.com. I'm not sure if it's clean in all the bands it's supposed to operate on, but we're going to test it and check back later. So it's about time to get the terminated dipole up in the air when I'm in the field. The 12 meter spider beam mast is here waiting for that, but I need snow anchors for it, so we'll come back to that. You know, one of the things I've learned from this solar powered field station project is we can't always do everything alone. All of these companies and the operators I'm about to mention have been extremely kind and helpful in putting this solar powered field station together. So in addition to my Patreon and PayPal supporters, I want to thank those operators from Kilo Delta, Kilo Golf, Delta Kilo, Kilo Quebec, Kilo Bravo, Victor Kilo, Victor Alpha, Kilo 7, and Oscar Hotel, who've made this solar power field station possible. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned we've come a long way with the solar powered field station. If you'd like to keep this project moving forward, please visit my GoFundMe page at GoFundMe.com field station. If nothing else, at least read the presentation there. For those of you supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal, you guys are magnificent. Thank you very much. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content that I'm sharing, please consider giving me a thumbs up, leaving a comment, and sharing this video with someone or somewhere where people might like it. Until next week, rock and roll guys. Thanks for watching.